My name is Joanna Rosado, and I'm the Acting Regional Administrator for the General Services Administration's Mid-Atlantic Region, based here in Philadelphia. It is my privilege to welcome you to the dedication of the Fruit of the Spirit and a celebration of the artist, Mo Brooker. We are pleased to have Mr. Brooker's family here today. The General Services Administration is the federal government's landlord. Our responsibility as landlord is more than just keeping the lights on. GSA is also a steward of our nation's heritage of art. If you walked up 6th Street from Market to Arch to get to the building today, you passed pieces from GSA's collection on our plaza. Louise Nevelson's sculpture, Bicentennial Dawn, greeted you on the plaza. David von Schlegel's Voyage of Ulysses on the plaza as well. In the spring, it's a fountain. In the summer, you'll, you'll see flowers around it. Facing me is Charles Sears' celebration. The Fruit of the Spirit is the first Art and Architecture Commission for the Federal Complex since it was constructed in the 70s and we are very excited to add it to our collection. In the words of the noted philosopher Rod Stewart, every picture tells a story, and the fruit of the spirit is no exception. Let me tell you a couple of stories. Many of you know that the FBI is a tenant in this building. Special Agent Jake Archer is a member of FBI's art crime team. He knows a thing or two about good art and he has joined us here today. Special Agent Archer took a special interest in the installation and asked to meet the artist. Donna Andrews, our Regional Historic Preservation Officer, approached Mo to ask him if he had a minute and phrase it as, Mo, the FBI would like to talk to you. <laughs> he was startled, to say the least. When the painting was finally installed on September 17th, exactly five months ago today, Mo quietly approached the painting, smiling ear to ear, turned to the group assembled and said, who painted this? I've never seen this painting before. I can't believe it. It's finally home. Today, we welcome this painting home. Before I introduce our next speaker, Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, which and justice for all. Our next speaker is Andrea O'Neill, Senior Advisor to our Administrator at GSA for Equity, and GSA's first in this position. Andrea is helping leading equity across all of GSA, whether we're helping small disadvantaged businesses do work for the federal government or ensuring that equity is reflected in our federal footprint, including this building. Andrea? Good morning. Thank you, Joanna, and thank you to the Brooker family uh, for allowing us to be here today and uh, to get, dedicate this work. Um, it is an honor, and uh, my condolences on your loss. From day one, President Biden has made equity one of the administration's top priorities. I'm pleased to be leading these efforts at GSA because there is so much opportunity to make a difference across government and for the people we serve, including Philadelphians. One of our most impactful ways to advance equity is by leveraging the thousands of federal spaces around the country that we oversee, including this building. We view these buildings as members of their communities. Uh, and to do that successfully, we have to uh, define what a community member means. And I'd like to do that in the context of this dedication. It means we reflect on the fact that just steps away from here uh, where our country's founding documents were drafted and that we still have work to do to fully realize their ideals. It also means that we recognize that this building was constructed, as Joanna mentioned, in the 70s. 
the same time as the African American Museum of Philadelphia, just across the street. And these buildings have borne witness to each other uh, and to the events surrounding them for nearly 50 years. It means that we celebrate the generations of black Philadelphians who have helped shape this wonderful American city. Clearly this building and indeed its very lobby are physical manifestations of the larger story of how government and democracy can and must work for everyone. And to me, that is why The Fruit of the Spirit by Mo Brooker is so perfect for this space. It is not only an inspiring work that stirs something deep within us, I mean, I just walked in, I see the scale, you feel it. Um, it is part of the tapestry of this community and our country, tying together our past, our present, and our future. As we look forward to this moment, please simply know that GSA is more committed than ever to advancing equity and accessibility in how we build, modernize, and manage our federal properties. We're doing that by deepening the level of engagement we have with historically underserved communities. And of course, we know that advancing equity and supporting the vitality of America's communities are inextricably linked. So with that, I'll turn it over uh, to a true champion of this work, uh, GSA Administrator Robin Carnahan, to formally dedicate the piece. Robin. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. This is really exciting. Andrea, thank you for all the terrific work you've been doing at GSA and across the government. Um, and Joanna, thanks so much for your leadership here in the region. I want to acknowledge that Mayor Jim Kinney is here. He'll be speaking in, in a couple of minutes. And also, Anju Gupta from Congressman Evans' office. Are you here with us? Maybe, maybe not. Um, and uh, Tia Watson from Senator Casey's office. Thank you all. Now, I never had the chance to meet Mo. I know that was a, my loss, but I was able last week to read a transcript of an interview that he did with folks from our team. And so I wanted to share a little bit of that because it gave a little bit of color to me about his work, his inspiration for being an artist. First was, he was asked why he chose the name Fruit of the Spirit. And here's what he said said, I think making art is spiritual, you know? You walk in, you don't know why something will happen, but you feel it inside. I'm the son of a preacher man. And so for me, Fruit of the Spirit talks a great deal about one's inside. Who are you inside? What are the fruits who are inside? What do you do inside? How do you make the inside shine outside. I love that. It's clear that Mo wanted all of us who walk by this piece, members of the public, people who might be coming and going from work, to have that personal inspiration, to have a warmth, to have a discovery. It's the largest work he ever did. And he aimed to have it lift our spirits to spread joy and to be an aspirational and inspiration to all of us. And I think he pulled that off. When he was asked about his decision to become an artist, <laughs> he told the story of how he broke the news to his father, that his father did not want him to be an artist, wanted him to be a doctor. And his dad said, Mo, you're going to starve and you're going to be walking around in shabby clothes. But Mo knew what he wanted. And fortunately, he had a sister who believed in his talents, too. And the story is that when he first applied to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, he was rejected. And that his sister marched into the office, I confirmed this today, told them that they had made a terrible mistake and got him admitted. So not only, apparently, did the person you marched into their office admit later that you were right, but apparently your father admitted that too. So that seems like that was a big step. Mo grew into a world-renowned abstract artist. He brings his work to life through all of these vivid colors and shapes and lines. But early on, his work was very different. I heard a little bit about that today, how it had progressed over the years. 
Early on, it, it was more representational. Sometimes it reflected the social and professional barriers that he faced as an artist who was black. In a PBS interview a couple of years ago, he talked about bands and how he had used bands in his early work to reflect the restrictions that, quote, was not only a question of device for comp composition, it was about how I felt as a person, as a black man in this country. When he was asked how he wanted people to see this work, he said, what are the bars? What are the stripes? You know the stripes are no longer surrounding it, but they're incorporated into the piece. Because I don't feel restricted at this point. And I don't want them, the viewers, to feel restricted either. I want them to feel a sense of refreshed mood and a sense of love. Seems terrific. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention the work across the hall. Y'all take a look at that. It's another piece. Uh, by a celebrated artist in Philadelphia, Charles Surlis. It's called Celebration. He was a good friend of Moe's, also a graduate of the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. We commissioned that work, GSA, in 1975 when the building was done, and he and Moe wanted to make sure that this piece had a nice balance with the piece across the way. Both of these, let me just say, are part of GSA's art and architecture program that turns 50 this year. And through that, the federal government and GSA has one of the biggest art collections in the world. Today, that program, including this work, was funded by a percentage of money that goes into every construction project, which is pretty terrific. But here's what I want to talk about today, specifically for you, and that is because public art is for all the people, and the Biden-Harris administration is very committed to having it reflect all of our communities. Uh, we need to have more public art and public artists that are involved. So my ask of you today is as you go back, go, go, go back home, go into your communities, let people know that this program exists. Let them know that artists can reflect their communities. And we have an arts registry. It's called the GSA Arts Registry. And I would encourage you all to have Everybody you know who's an artist, sign up for that. We now have about 1,500 artists on that registry. It's the first place we go when it comes to commissioning. Uh, but we know that there are many more people who are ready to unleash their talents and lift our spirits and represent their communities. So with that, I would like to, however officially this can be, unveil this magnificent painting on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, the General Services Administration, and to officially dedicate the fruit of the spirit. So join me. So with that, Mayor Kenny, can you please share a few words? And thank you so much for all the work that you've been doing uh, to, to uplift communities across this city. Thank you, Robin, and good morning to everyone. I'm really grateful to be here alongside so many of our appointed and elected officials for the dedication of the fruit of the spirit and to celebrate the life and work of Philadelphia's own Mo Brooker. First, I'd like to extend again a warm, wel wel warm welcome to GSA Administrator Robin Carnahan and to Joanne Rosado, Acting Regional Direct Administrator of GSA. We're also glad to have you here in Philly. And I also want to acknowledge that the Brooker family, uh, on behalf of the city of Philadelphia, extend the deepest condolences for your loss. Mo is a phenomenal artist and a phenomenal person. I think we can all agree that title just scratches the surface. Mo is an educator, a mentor, a pioneer of the arts, and chair of the Philadelphia Art Commission for many years, and a prominent member of our community, just to name a few of his roles. Um, this behind me represents something that I've been working on since before I became mayor, and that's telling kind of the true story of Philadelphia and American history. Uh, outside of City Hall is a statue of Octavius Caddo, who was a little known but wonderful, an amazing person who lived in the 1800s and fought segregation, uh, fought, fought for the Union, uh, was one of the best baseball players in America, uh, and um, just was an all-around Jackie Robinson, Martin Luther King of his day, uh, and no one ever knew the story. Um, we are working on now raising money for a statue to uh, honor Marian Anderson who was one of the most phenomenal world-known figures in history, but a lot of people still don't know 
the impact that she had. And on loan outside of City Hall is Harriet Tubman, uh, who will be here for a little bit, but then she'll be leaving to go on a tour to other cities. We have, uh, we have commissioned a work representative of that same work to be placed outside of City Hall permanently. These statues and these kinds of work by African-American artists and African-American historical figures are very much a magnet. If you see around Octavius, people are always around there. I've seen, I've seen church groups in a circle holding hands with Octavius and each other praying. Every one of the um, peaceful marches that took place as a result of the, the civil unrest that we went through started at Octavius's statue. I see people, white and black and other, all other stripes, taking pictures of Harriet Tubman uh, outside of City Hall. The importance of these types of things is that we have all contributed to our country, uh, not just white men from Europe. Uh, there's lots of f folks who did amazing heroic things, including Mo, um, that, that we need to recognize. So I'm just really happy to be here today as part of this. And I, as I said when I first saw this, this will be here forever. Mo will be here forever. Uh, his memory will be here forever, and um, we appreciated his work and his life, uh, and God bless you all. Thank you. Okay, next up is Mo's sister, uh, Vivian Brooker Ford. She is the infamous one who made sure Mo became an artist, uh, and uh, Dr. Ford graduated from Cheney State College and Cheney University, also has a doctorate from American University, like Mo, an educator who's taught a countless students from oh, across the country and around the world. Thank you so much, Dr. Ford, and please share a few words. I think they told me that I have seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes is a nearly enough time to talk about Mo Brooker. The Fruit of the Spirit, is, uh, as many of you probably know, is directly from the scriptures. And although there are very, very, qual very um, various qualities to it, it's like a grapefruit. There are several sections to it. And one of them, um, I guess you would say joy, patience, love, faithfulness. These are all qualities that Mo tried to exhibit. I come from a family, we're PKs, by the way. And those of you who don't know what PKs are, we are preacher's kids. So. We come from a family, our parents were very uh, prolific, so they had eight of us, and uh, <laughs> there were six boys, seven boys actually, and me. Mo and I were born last, so the family called us the twins because we were very, very close. If you look at the painting, you will see some of the qualities that he tried to convey. And it's very difficult for me to talk about Bo without saying, blessed are you who bear the light in unbearable times, who testify to its endurance amid the undurable, who bear witness to its persistence when everything seems in shadow and grief. Blessed are you in whom the light lives, in whom the brightness blazes. President Bush once said that the light of some people shines so brightly that it is difficult to think of it ever being snuffed out. Mo Brooker is one of those people. His light was so bright, it was fired by joy. There is an old Negro spiritual which says, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. 
The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Mo's joy saturated his work. It draws one into a calliope of sound and color. It speaks to his life's experiences, moving across the canvas confidently and effortlessly. It tells us about the jazz of our older brother, the cadence of our father's sermons, the rhythmic gospel music of the church, the healing hand of our mother who tended our bruises, physical and emotional, the checker games, the street games, his desire to have children, his need to paint and express these things was compelling. Moe's improvisations leap from the canvas and dance to jazz riffs. Every color explodes with purpose, leading us through each creative form. Each stroke of his brush seems to hold a mystery, a secret eager to be told, awaiting comprehension. He invites us to listen with our eyes. Which many of you probably will ponder. But it's true. You can listen with your eyes. In our family, his personality was very much like our dad's. My phone is making this horrible noise. So I'm trying to. <laughs> Okay. It was very much like our dad's. Full of laughter, a bit mischievous, and never bewailing his circumstances. If he complained at all, it was about injustices to others, especially those in the arts. And his mantra was, I'm fine, I'm good, no matter how sick he was. As PKs, we lived in a fishbowl, watched and examined. Our father expected us never to bring shame to the name Brooker. He encouraged excellence, the best from what God had given us, letting no one define us and believing in ourselves. Mo absorbed these admonitions and used them as a map toward fulfillment. After his quadruple bypass, Mo pressed his way through completion of this project. I watched his wife, Alfreda, walk from their home to his studio with breakfast, even lunch, for he was so enwrapped in his work that he would forget to eat. Mo poured himself into every piece of his art, but this commission somehow seemed different. An urgency seemed to hover over it as if he knew this would be his final contribution to the world. Quite unexpectedly, when we were at the studio, his wife came in, he gave her the paintbrush, and he told her to draw a line anywhere on the project. Very hesitantly, she did. He looked at her and he said, now you are part of what I have given of myself to this work. His love of family and ga family gatherings was infectious. His joy made it an exciting time. At Christmas, Mo purchased gifts for everyone, expecting nothing in return. He was generous to a fault. When he was in New York, he had a stroke. And after his stroke, Mo returned to Philadelphia for a period of recovery in my home. I witnessed the love and care by his wife, Alfreda, and nieces, Lisa, and Wendy, and others who visited often, cooking his favorite meals, frequently staying overnight, making him laugh, encouraging him to live. In short, we had a blast, and he seemed to be moving toward complete recovery. 
He said that Thanksgiving and Christmas of 2021 were the best of these holidays ever. Our 94-year-old brother Bobby and his 92-year-old wife were able to attend both holiday dinners. That was significant to Mo. This was the first time in many, many years that the three of us had been able to celebrate these special days together. As a family, we thank you, Mayor Kenny, for your friendship and for taking this time from your very busy schedule to memorialize this moment. We extend special thanks to GSA for their reassurance to Mo that they were willing to wait for what he spawned, no matter the inopportune interruptions, no matter the wait. You will never know how much that spurred him on and encouraged him to live. Please accept our deepest gratitude. Speaking for myself, Mo's courage, his humility, and his faith in the power of his art have taught a lifelong lesson to me and perhaps to many others. I have learned the dignity of being loyal to something in which one believes, holding on to it above all else, believing without question. It will carry you to your destination. The joy that Mo had, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Thank you. The story that Dr. Ford told about uh, the painting and his invitation to you to, to make a stroke, he did the same with our team who, who visited the studio. And, uh, and the story is that he, he called them up and said, come and, and they were very nervous to do so. <laughs> but, but that just goes to show you that we're all a part of, of this painting this day. And, uh, and we thank you for being here today as we dedicate um, the fruit of the spirit. We like to say that GSA is a team sport, so I'd like to thank our folks who work together to get ready for this day um, and to welcome Mo Brooker's painting to its new home. Thank you for being here, and God bless you all.